Today in this 2010 Chevrolet Express van, we will be having a look at and showing you how to install the Taconcha Primus IQ trailer brake controller, part number TK90160. To ease our install, we'll be using the Universal 7-Way Trailer Brake Controller Kit, part number ETBC7. Here's what our brake controller looks like installed. Now what's great about this brake controller is that this is a proportional brake controller which allows us to slow down smoothly and safely when we're towing a trailer and our brakes are being applied instantly versus with a time delayed brake controller it's also not going to give you a jerky ride like a time delayed brake controller would now the reason you're going to want a brake controller such as this one is if you're towing a trailer that has electric brakes you won't be able to control them without having a brake controller now what sets this brake controller apart from other proportional units on the market is not only is this a very high quality unit, but it's also a very simple one to use without a lot of overly complex features. This gives you the basic functions that you need in order to safely and easily utilize trailer brakes. To our right, we have our manual override. And what this does, this will apply our trailer brakes to the maximum level that we have set the further we press it in. The reason you want a manual override is because if your trailer starts to sway behind you or starts to jackknife, you only want to slow the trailer down, not your vehicle. That'll make things worse. So by applying this, only the brakes on the trailer will be applied without you applying your vehicle's brakes. Over here to the left, this is our gain adjustment knob. This knob here controls how much power is being sent to your trailer brakes. Right now, if it's set all the way up, you see our display reads at 11. As we start to roll it back, it'll start to drop back down all the way down to zero, which means no trailer brakes being applied. General rule of thumb, you wanna start it somewhere in the middle. So about five and a half will be ideal. This will be perfect for you to dial down or dial up your trailer brakes as you feel necessary for your comfort level or depending on how heavy your load is. This button here at the top, this is our boost control button. What this does is that this enables your boost mode. There's three different settings. There's one, there's two, there's three, and then of course there's off. What boost does is it applies your brakes quicker and with more intensity than with having it on. So the further you go up, the faster they're being applied and with more intensity. This is great for situations where you suddenly encounter different terrain, like you're going downhill and it's much steeper, or you need to have more brake action faster or if you're in heavier traffic. You can just reach down and press this button without having to worry about adjusting your knob. It's quick and it's easy. This particular controller will allow you to control up to three axles of electric trailer brakes for a total of up to six brakes assemblies. What many of our customers have stated about this brake controller is that they like how well it works and how reliable it is. Several of our customers have had it for many years and have never had any issues with it. Some have even transferred it into other vehicles when they buy a new truck or a new car. Now that we've gone over some features, we'll show you how to get it installed. Before we begin our install, we need to first make sure our vehicle has an existing four pole flat wiring harness that is working properly, and ours does. Now we need to find a place to mount our seven way bracket. Our hitch conveniently has a wiring harness bracket already attached to it, so we'll just use the provided hardware to secure the bracket to the hitch. Now if your hitch doesn't have a bracket like this on it, we do have several no drill mounting brackets available on our website for your application. We'll just tighten this down with a screwdriver and a wrench. Now we'll take our seven way, we'll slide the wires through the slot, push it against the bracket, and we'll use the provided hardware to secure the seven way to the bracket. Be sure to tighten our screws securely. Now we can start making our electrical connections. For our four pole flat, we can either plug them together like this, or what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna cut our four pole ends off and combine our wires together with heat shrink butt connectors for a more reliable connection because we don't run the risk of getting moisture inside our connector. So I'll just cut our ends off. We'll strip back the insulation from all of our wires. 
Now we'll use some of our 14 to 16 gauge heat shrink butt connectors, which we have available on our website. We'll crimp our wire into these connectors. Now we'll match them up color to color. This purple wire here, this is for reverse signal input in our application. We will not be using this today, so we'll just cut off the excess wire, but still leave a length there in case we decide to use it in the future. This black wire is for our constant 12 volt power that goes to our seven way. It has a standard butt connector on it right now. We'll cut this off because we'll be using a heat shrink butt connector with it. This blue wire is for our trailer brake output. And we'll strip these two wires back. Now we'll use some of our 10 to 12 gauge heat shrink butt connectors that we have on our website. And we'll crimp those on to our blue and black wires. Now we'll take one end of our gray duplex wire, take our knife, go in the middle here. That'll open up the insulation, exposing the two wires that are inside. We'll have a black and a white one. Just cut off the end of that insulation. And we'll strip back both ends. The black wire, we will add to our black wire from our seven way. The white wire will add to our blue wire. And now we'll use a heat gun to shrink down our butt connectors. We have these available on our website if you need one. You want to use a heat gun over a traditional source of heat like a lighter because this is indirect heat, not a direct flame, and it won't damage the connector. Now we'll take some electrical tape. We're going to wrap our end of our purple wire up here just to help protect it a little bit more in case we ever decide to use it again. Now we'll also use electrical tape to tape up our wires so we don't have any colored wires hanging below our vehicle. You can also use the wire loom that's provided if you so choose. All right, this will be good enough. We can tuck the rest up and secure it behind our bumper. Let's make sure I do the same around these butt connectors here. This will offer a little added strength and security. And now we'll show you how we routed the wire to the front. Our duplex wire needs to go to the front of the vehicle to hook up to our battery or fuse box and our brake controller. We go inside the frame right here for our spare tire brace. And then it continues inside the frame all the way to the front of the vehicle. So our wire is still inside the frame. We're right by the rear leaf spring hanger right now. Continues coming forward. See a glimpse of it right there. It comes out right here and we have it zip tied to a factory wiring harness right here. And then it goes up into our engine compartment. So our wire comes through our engine bay and we have a zip tied to this wiring harness here to help keep it away from any moving parts such as our steering shaft or any sources of heat, such as our exhaust. Okay, now we're gonna separate our black and white wire all the way down to the very end of our duplex wire, starting at this point here. So we'll just slice right down the middle, making sure we don't nick our wires inside. And we'll just keep going until we're at the end. Okay, now that we have our wires exposed, we need to find a place to mount our circuit breakers. We'll would be using a 30 amp, and a 40 amp breaker. We can use the provided self-tapping screws and secure them right here to our cowl. Okay, now with our black wire, we need to measure off how much we're gonna to need to connect to the silver side, which is labeled AUX for auxiliary on our 40 amp breaker. Cut off the excess here. And we'll save that wire because we will need it later. Strip off some insulation. Take one of our small yellow ring terminals and we will crimp it down. And we'll attach that to our breaker. Now we'll take one of our nuts, place it on that stud, and we'll tighten it down. We'll take one end of our leftover black wire, 
strip off some insulation, place on another one of those small yellow rain terminals, and we'll crimp that down as well. Place on the copper color terminal on our 40 amp breaker, place the nut on, and we'll tighten that as well. Now we need to locate our fuse box. It's directly below where we're working right now, below our master cylinder reservoir. It's got a couple tabs on it that we can push on and pull the lid up. Let's get it out of the way for right now. Here's the tabs that we pushed on to remove it. Now the wire that goes to the battery side or the copper color side of our 48 breaker, we're measuring off how much we're gonna need to connect to this nut here because this cable goes directly to our vehicle's battery. If our wire measured off, we'll cut off the excess and we'll strip off some insulation. Now we'll take one of our larger diameter yellow ring terminals, place it over the wire, and we'll crimp it down. We'll just let this sit for right now. We don't need to connect it yet. Now on our leftover black wire that we have, we'll strip off the insulation on one end, and we'll attach another small ring terminal, and we'll stick this on the copper color side of our 30 amp breaker, placing on a nut, and we'll tighten that down. Now we'll measure off how much we're gonna need of that wire to connect to the same stud as we are for the other breaker. And we'll cut off the excess. And we'll crimp on a large diameter ring terminal. Okay. And we'll leave this one loose as well for right now. We'll connect these once we're done making the rest of our connections. Now what we have left of our black wire, we'll attach one of our small yellow ring terminals to it, crimping it in place. And this will go to the silver auxiliary stud on our 30 amp breaker. Now the black wire that we just attached to the silver side of our 30 amp breaker for the auxiliary port and the white wire, which goes back to the blue wire on the back of our seven way at the end of the vehicle, we need to pass both of these wires inside of our vehicle through our firewall grommet, which we can locate down here. So this is our firewall grommet right here. We'll poke a hole in it with a screwdriver or something like that, making sure we don't damage any of the wires inside, and we'll push our two wires through. Okay, here we are inside our van on the driver's side of the dash. Here's our grommet. This red wire here is a piece of airline tubing. We place this through the hole that we poked in the firewall with the screwdriver. We're going to use this to pull our wires through inside of our vehicle. You can also use a coat hanger or something like that in order to make this work. Okay, we have our white and our black wire taped to our pull wire now. So now we can go inside the vehicle and pull these two wires inside. And there's our white wire. And here's our black wire. Okay, we cut off the excess of our white wire so it's the same length as our black wire. Now we'll strip out the insulation on both. And we'll crimp on our provided yellow butt connectors. These are not heat shrink butt connectors. That's okay because we're in the interior of the vehicle and it's not exposed to the elements. Now this is the harness that comes with our brake controller. The blue wire, this is our electric brake controller output. We'll strip off a little bit more insulation and we'll attach this to our white wire which goes back to our seven way. The black wire, we'll attach this to the black wire on our harness. Now we need to locate our vehicle's brake light switch, which is attached to our brake pedal right here. We have a wiring harness that plugs into it here and then plugs in right here. We're looking for the cold side and what that means is that it only has power flowing through it when the brake pedal is depressed. Now it should be this blue or gray looking wire with a white stripe. We use a test light and stick it inside the back side of the terminal and back probe it. 
as we step on the brake pedal, our test light illuminates. So that is the wire we need to make a connection with. Now to make it easier on us, we can unplug this length of wire. To do that, let's we'll press on this tab here, pull it away. Now that we have this end of it unplugged, we can easily make our connection. We'll just take off some of this electrical tape covering over it so we have more room to work with. Let's peel it back, that'll be fine. So we'll tape this wire and we'll cut it right in the middle. And we'll strip back the insulation on both ends. Now we'll take the red wire from a brake controller harness and we'll strip off a little bit more insulation. Now we'll take a red wire and we'll twist one end of our factory wire in with it. Doesn't matter which end. Now we'll take one of the blue butt connectors that comes with our brake controller and we'll place it over that wire and we'll crimp it in place. The other end will go to the other end of the factory wire that we cut and we'll crimp that in place. Okay, now we can plug back in our brake light switch connector. Now the white wire that comes off of our brake controller harness will strip off some insulation from it, twist the wire together, fold it back upon itself so we double the thickness of it, take one of our large diameter yellow ring terminals, place it over the wire, and we'll crimp this down. Now we need to attach this to our vehicle's chassis to serve as a grounding point. Now at the top right corner of our dash right here, there's a 10 millimeter nut. We can remove this nut, place our ring terminal on the stud, and reinstall the nut, and this will serve as a great grounding point for us. To give you an idea where this is at, it's almost directly above our gas pedal. Now we need to find a place to mount our brake controller. The lower right hand corner of your dash is where you typically will mount one. We'll use our provided hardware to secure our bracket. Now we'll take our brake controller and our wiring harness. We'll plug it in. Now we'll take our brake controller and we'll place it on our bracket. And we'll use the provided hardware to secure it into place. Okay, with both of our screws in place, we'll now use our screwdriver to tighten down our screws. We went ahead and bundled up all of our excess wires with a few zip ties just to keep them away from our feet as we're driving. All right, now that we have all of our electrical connections made, it is time for us to remove this 10 millimeter nut right here and attach the two leads that go to our circuit breakers. Okay, we'll reinstall the nut now. Now we'll reinstall our fuse box cover. Now we'll go ahead and plug our trailer into our van to make sure it works. And as you can see, with the C being displayed on our screen, that means we have a proper connection and our brake controller is working properly. And that completes our look at and installation of the Takancha Primus IQ trailer brake controller, part number TK90160 on our 2010 Chevrolet Express van.